So, what is going on guys? I am Black Ops Amazing. Welcome back to another Zombies video where today we have another story of episode coming back with the story of Sophia. Now, this is a different one. This wasn't one that was really requested in the comments section below, but I thought I'd do something a little bit different and instead of doing the boss characters, what we've been doing recently, I'd instead go to a main character in our zombie storyline and an important part of that is Sophia. She has a very interesting background and today I want to tell you her story. Now make note in the next episode I will be using comments from the comments section below to choose a character and I'll be making an awesome epic intro including your comments. So if you want to be in the video make sure you leave a comment letting me know what you want. But without further ado leave a like rating if you haven't already. Make sure you are subscribed and let's get into the video. Here we go. On May the 10th of 1931 Dr. Ludwig Maxis formed Group 935, an experimental organization dedicated to the study of Element 115. Maxis tells his scientists that they represent the future of technological advancement and will be pioneers of human discovery. The group swore in secrecy for their respective governments. As Maxis said, we cannot afford to let this power fall into the wrong hands. As time went by to take on the workload, Maxis employed more people at Group 935, and one of those was Sophia. Sophia became Maxis's assistant. She would help Maxis complete projects on teleportation and experiments with his weapons. And everything in Group 935 was going well. They were getting closer on the construction of the MDT teleporters. Richtofen's wonder weapon, the Wonder Waffer DG2, was in progress, and everything seemed to be going well. That was until Group 935 started to run out of funding. They simply didn't have enough money on their own to continue the research they wanted. And so, Maxis saw no other opportunity. After seeing no other option, on July the 13th of 1940, he instructed his assistant, Sophia, to write a letter to the Rashdog High Command requesting additional funding. Sophia, this letter is to go to the Reichstag High Command immediately. Gentlemen, it is with the utmost urgency that I draw your attention to the lack of funding being injected into the giant project. While I believe we are close to realizing the ultimate plan, we still have several years of development before it is ready. It would be folly to cut our expenditures so early in our development. As you know, early tests on the DG2 have easily outperformed expectations, and we fully anticipate mass producing the wonder offer within the next few years work on the matter transference has however come to a standstill we simply do not have enough element 115 to continue the experiments the test subjects have survived the teleportation but are currently unresponsive to commands and cannot be controlled if we are to overcome this obstacle we need to increase the frequency and size of the experiment to this end I suggest we find not only a regular supply of 115, but that we also find a larger conduit to channel the energy. Our operatives in America have informed us that the U.S. has a large supply of the element at the Nevada base. So time is of the essence if we are to stay ahead of them. This cannot be done if you cut the budget, nor can it be done if you insist on pressuring us into action before we are ready. I am, of course, available for discussion on the matter, but in the meantime, I will continue with the work here and try to win this damned war. Signed, etc., etc., Dr. Maxis. Maxis didn't want to get his research involved with the Nazis, but because of his group running out of funding, he saw no other option but to ask for money. Not only was Maxis running low on money, but also element 115. The Doris facility didn't have enough to keep Maxis's research going, but luckily for him, a few weeks later, in response to Maxis's request, Germany agreed to fund Maxis's research, but they told him in return that Group 935 must create the Germans an undead army. Seeing no other option, Maxis agreed. Not only did Germany give Maxis the funding, but they also created two new facilities for Group 935, which was the Kino facility, a repurposed theatre, and the Asylum facility at Wittenau Sanatorium in 
Berlin. With Maxis and Group 935 now having the funding, they carried on with their research. Not only now creating weapons, but also an undead army for the Nazis. Once the Kino facility was ready, Dr. Maxis, accompanied by Sophia, was transferred to the Kino facility to focus on creating Germany's undead army. But wanting to keep this a secret from Richthofen, Maxis told him that he needs to go away. He left Samantha in his care and along with Sophia went to the Kino facility. Once Maxis arrived at Kino der Toten and after setting everything up, Maxis started to worry that Sophia had grown too close to him. He knew that his daughter Samantha became jealous because she thought that Sophia was going to take the place of her mum who had died and even Richthofen became worried thinking that Maxis had become distracted by Sophia and so realizing this Maxis considered sending Sophia away however he didn't he changed his mind and got on with his work with group 935 at the Kino facility this would turn out to be the wrong decision. Maxis started his work at the Kino facility, trying to find a cure that could control the mind of his undead army that he was trying to create. The test subjects had been undergoing treatment for five days with very little progress. However, as a few weeks passed, Maxis started to make great strides in breaking through to their subconsciousness. Subject 2-6, one of the zombies Maxis was trying to control, started to respond to the treatment he was being given, and even began to follow basic instructions. The violent outburst that Subject 2-6 was having had been greatly reduced, and given the time, Maxis thought this method of treatment would be 100% effective. That was until, unfortunately, one day, Sophia and another member of Group 935 were preparing to implement the treatment on other subjects. That was when Subject 2-6 attacked a handler. The handler that was preparing to inject the cure into this zombie was attacked. Not only was the handler attacked, but also Sophia was attacked by 2-6 as well. And because of this, both the handler and subject 26 had to be destroyed. 26 was too dangerous to be kept alive and so was killed, and the handler would become infected, and so before that could happen, was killed as well. Even though Sophia was also attacked by the zombie, she thought that no one knew. She thought that she could keep this a secret, and so carried on with her work. But soon enough, Sophia developed patterns of high fever and cold sweats. And having the close relationship that she had to Maxis, she feared that she couldn't keep this a secret from him for very long. After many weeks of failure and frustration, Dr. Maxis finally achieves the breakthrough he had been searching for. The results were immediate and startling. In the case of Subject 2-6, his instances of violent outburst were non-existent. His docility appeared. Permanent. Unfortunately, while we prepared to implement the treatment on the other subjects, there was an incident. During his field test this morning, Subject 2-6 attacked a handler. 2-6 and the handler were both destroyed. Maxis believes Subject 2-6 only attacked the handler. He does not know I was attacked as well. I have observed a developing pattern of high fevers and cold sweats. My thoughts are erratic. My relationship with Ludwig is complicated. I fear I cannot keep this secret from him for long. She thought that no one else knew that Subject 2-6 attacked her as well, but actually, Maxis did know. And knowing this, he knew that he had to do something to save Sophia, and so called her into his office. Sophia knocked on his door, she came in, Maxis offered her some tea, but what she doesn't know is that actually, Maxis had poisoned it. Putting poison in Sophia's drink, he killed her. And as she slowly died, coughing, falling to the ground, he told her that he loves her and everything that he is about to do is for her own good. Sophia is now dead. The break in programming coincided with the flashing lights and loud noises of the fire alarm in the test facility. One moment. What is it? You wanted to see me, Ludwig? Sophia, yes. Do come in. Sit down, my dear. Have some tea. Is everything all right? No, no. Everything's fine. Drink your tea. 
I heard a nefarious rumor earlier regarding the field test with Subject 26. Are you feeling all right? Of course. Just strange, this rumor. May I see your arm? What? No. Why do you need to see my arm? Relax, Sophia. I would never hurt you. You know that, right? Of course, but... And you know I care deeply for you. Yes, but... <coughs> yes, yes, yes. Then you know everything I'm about to do is for your own good. With Sophia now dead, Maxis operates on her, cutting open her skull, removing her brain, and transferring it into a machine, which Max is called the Strategic Operation Planning Heuristic Intelligence Analyzer, otherwise known as Sophia. Sophia had become a machine. Once he had done this, he then activated her. This is Dr. Ludwig Maxis, beginning preliminary trials for the Strategic Operations Planning Heuristic Intelligence Analyzer. Once Maxis had brought Sophia back as artificial intelligence, he then transferred her to Stalingrad to oversee Group 935's operations. Because of the technological advancements on both sides, Russia and Germany, the Battle of Stalingrad didn't end. And so because of this, Group 935's operations were still active in Stalingrad. And so to oversee everything, Maxis sent Sophia, the artificial intelligence, over there to oversee operations. But while she's there, Sophia declares that the Battle of Stalingrad is nearing victory for the German forces and that the Valkyrie drones have been deployed to locate any resistance strains and attempt capture. After the release of large concentrations of Element 115 by German forces, the city of Stalingrad then becomes largely populated by the undead, meaning that everyone in Group 935 and the people in the surrounding area become infected and turn into zombies, leaving Sophia to be one of the only few surviving. And whilst World War II still rages on, Stalingrad now turned into a three-way conflict between the dragons, machine, and the undead. Without any remaining human survivors, Sophia is now trapped in the city. That was until one day on November the 6th of 1945, drifting through space and time in his ethereal form, Dr. Gersh arrives in the Gorod Karovi fracture. His soul becomes trapped in Stalingrad. Now with only Gersh, Sophia, the undead and machine in the city, trapped as we know, during this time on their quest to secure Nikolai's soul, Richtofen and the crew arrive at Stalingrad, where they find Sophia. As we know, she instructs them to perform various tasks to initiate the Ascension Protocol so that they can in return receive a power core to repair Nikolai's mech suit. These tasks include retrieving Gersh to extract information from him, escorting a malfunctioned Russian mangler and a Valkyrie drone for her to analyze, retrieving information from the fallen graph module, terminating a self-destruct sequence and downloading information on interdimensional travel. Once all of these tasks for Sophia are completed, Sophia is freed. She dislodges from her normal position and departs from Gorod Karovi in the search of Dr. Maxis. As we know, in the meantime with Sophia gone, Richtofen collects Nikolai's soul, sends the souls of the characters to the house where Dr. Monty turns them into children and then the crew go there into Dr. Monty's perfect universe where the shadow man who has been hiding in the summoning key all of this time begins to talk to Dr. Maxis. Maxis hears voices in his head, the shadow man tells him to come down to the basement, pick up the summoning key and the shadow man then uses this power to switch positions with Dr. Maxis. The shadow man is released from the summoning key into Monty's perfect universe into the house whilst the form of Dr. Maxis is sucked inside of the summoning key. So Maxis is now trapped in the summoning key whilst the shadow man is now free. As we know, once he's free, 
He causes all of this destruction, allows the Apothecans to enter Monty's perfect universe. And then, as usual, one last time, just when we thought everything was over, it's up to Richtoff and Taki and Nikolai and Dempsey to stop the Apothecans, to defeat them and to defeat the Shadow Man. And so, using the help of Sophia, who eventually found her way to Maxis, to the house, Sophia helps the crew defeat the Shadow Man. They push him back, and in order to save Monty's perfect universe, to save his daughter Samantha and the children, Dr. Maxis, trapped inside of the summoning key, along with Sophia, together they know what they must do. Yes, We will do it together, as one we are, now and forever. Sophia using the power of the machine, and Maxis being trapped inside of the summoning key using the power that it holds. Together, Maxis and Sophia fly into the black hole where the Apothecans came from and sacrifice themselves to save the universe.